biotech is a long game. Drug development is expensive. It's risky. It takes, you know, on average 10 years, there are a lot of failures, but the successes are spectacular. They're meaningful in terms of human health and they get appropriately rewarded when they work. So if you have patient capital, that's a possible destination of patient capital, but you just said it's risky. How do you know that it's gonna make money over the long term? You could lose all the money, couldn't you? Absolutely. Anybody who tells you you can't lose money in biotech uh, would be kidding you. But what you try and do is invest in portfolios. So as a venture capitalist, I never invest in single asset plays because there's very little that I can do to influence the outcome of that, you know, turning over the card and a lot of promising things fail in phase three. But if you're building a platform, whether it's in vaccine development and you're looking at, you know, therapeutic vaccines or prophylactic vaccines, or if you're looking at a modality that can work for neuropsychiatric and oncology, you try and invest in things that can be applied to different diseases and maybe that can be applied in different ways, like a small molecule and a monoclonal antibody. Those are far more diversified within one thing. And of course, a fund is a diversified approach to venture capital investing as well. So you just mentioned vaccines, which are, is on everyone's mind right now. How much has the coronavirus and the really remarkably rapid development of vaccines, how much that, has that changed your business? Is it already rushing to get into your business now? I think it's had an impact in two distinct ways. One is that it has reminded all of us how important science is, how much it matters in terms of the trajectory of human life and in terms of reaching out to people all across the economic and political spectrums in order to change what has become you know, one of the most feared problems of our day. And for a long time, pharmaceuticals and even biotechs were seen as something kind of abstract. So in that sense, I think we've had a resurgence of interest in science mattering to all of our lives. It's also, um, for sure, affected the types of investments we make. If you look at the way in which our lives have changed and the rise in telemedicine, this was something that was on the margins of the changes that were happening, and they're now in the forefront. And so I think certainly in our portfolio and in many portfolios, the investments that we've made prior to the pandemic in telehealth and telemedicine have shown a remarkable and we think durable growth. Warren Buffett in the past has said he doesn't want to invest in a company he can't understand. And that's why he stayed out of tech for a long time, although he did come around to Apple sooner or later. Is that true in biotech as well? I mean, how much science do you need as an investor to assess who's got the good science and who doesn't? That's a really tough question because I think you certainly need to understand the science. On the other hand, understanding the science doesn't necessarily tell you what's going to win or doesn't. And so understanding the science is a necessary but not sufficient. You have to understand the commercial marketplace, the team that you're building, the regulatory landscape, and you have to be willing to believe that what you're investing in is not an incremental change because incremental changes are the you know, way of the past in terms of venture investing. So looking forward, you mentioned telehealth as really being an opportunity here. What are the areas that you think over the next, as I say, five, 10, 15 years, you think are reasonably good bets, at least as a category in biotech? Yeah, well, <laughs> reasonably good bets. Maybe I can just reframe that question and tell you the things that I'm particularly interested in right now are things in the mental health space, given the tremendous challenges, the need um, that far outstrips the demand and the destigmatization of mental health that is happening around the world. And I think this is something that from a reimbursement model, from an outcomes model is really important. Of course, everybody looks at an aging population. And so that means that all of the diseases that disproportionately affect the aging are you know, profoundly at the top of mind, whether it's Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or any of those um, sorts of conditions. 
And then you couldn't get out of a biotech conversation these days without talking about the intersection between true artificial intelligence and adaptive machine learning and drug discovery. So I think those are things that are on everybody's mind.